Uh, Glendora, this is episode number four of the McCormick Estate. Uh, I was going through the executors actually, and just to review, it was the um, uh, the one executor was uh, by the name of L. Howes, and he was with nursing homes, a nursing home partner with my husband. And the second one was actually my husband's accountant. Herman Markowitz, who was a licensed certified public accountant, CPA, and uh, he had a conflict actually, the truth is he did, with doing the management, uh, the books for the uh, operating manager, uh, Eddie Jr., and uh, he did my uh, the estate's books, and then he was, he would he wanted a commission, of course, for being an executor. So, anyway, now I'm on the third executor. There were five executors in the state. Um, and uh, first of all, I'll say there were many conflicts and many problems. Um, they didn't really, White and Case, Wynne Rutherford of White and Case and uh, Bankers Trust Company, really, uh, they were not really following the will as far as I'm concerned. Often they would say, even David Kiko of Pillsbury Winthrop, uh, the lawyer who's covering for the uh, bank now, whenever you have a problem, he doesn't want to see you. He just says, the judge, the judge. Well, go to the judge. He'll decide. Well, if they have the judge in their back pocket, <laughs> as we now know, why, why wouldn't they go to the judge? He'll decide for what they want. Uh, the, sift, the system is definitely corrupt. There's no question in my mind. So um, the third executor here that my husband picked was Bankers Trust Company, of course. As the will stated, um, however, White and Case in filing the probate papers listed Bankers Trust of New York as an executor. That is not a correct name. They have in the permanent papers testamentary dated January 25, 1989. That's what they had, Bankers Trust of New York. Uh, anyway, the problem is that Bankers Trust Company of New York did not come into existence until 10 years later, 10 years after death, September 7, 1999. So uh, this is serious. Of course, letters testamentary are like the Bible to an estate. Uh, David Kiko of uh, Pillsbury, Winthrop, tried to cover up by stating that Bankers Trust of New York is geographic, because it states New York, it's geographic. Either he doesn't know the history of Bankers Trust, or he is outwardly lying. I had special research people dig up proven facts. One law firm asked if my research people would work for them. I, I thank God I have a loyal person who heads my group, so that did not occur. Uh, also, why didn't, as they pointed out to me, why didn't someone like Jody Keltz, the attorney referee for probate court, discover this wrong entity, Bankers Trust of New York? Incidentally, I was also told that Jody Keltz and her husband through a stroke of good luck, acquired a house in Scarsdale from an estate in the court where she worked for an exceedingly reasonable price. It's another conflict. It's serious. Actually, these things are all serious, but they were overlooked. That's all by all of them. Um, the fourth executor was myself as a non-independent executor since I was to be a, a beneficiary. And the fifth executor was my stepson, Eddie Jr., who was also non-independent executor and since he was going to be a beneficiary, as were his uh, other siblings. But they weren't executors. Eddie Jr. was the executor because he was managing the real estate. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. A lot of these conflicts people are not aware of, which at the time I was not aware of. But why weren't my attorneys aware of it? They had to be aware of it. Uh, okay, now, 
uh, many attorneys that I did interview, by the way, uh, did not want my case because uh, they would be seriously threatened. One attorney said a family. Uh, he had a family and he could not lose his law license. Another attorney said, I've handled one serious estate, a large estate, which we all know, and I'm not going through that again with the McCormick estate. So um, this is what's going on. Uh, now, as we talk about my dear friend, Wynne Rutherford of White and Case, the lawyer there, uh, according to, uh, shortly after my husband's death, White and Case, according to the law, uh, unlawful thing, rather, they legally abandoned the estate by representing the bank in filing for, uh, the reason was because in filing for a repayment, uh, of a loan that my husband had made of Bankers Trust, a $500,000 loan. Uh, in early February of 1989, my husband died in 1988, uh, in, in, they fraudulently represented the bank in order to get the repayment of the loan from my husband. And then they didn't, which actually according to a certain judge, which I'll go into later, but he admitted to a newspaper friend of ours, Martin Martinelli, Ralph Martinelli, that this was a serious uh, conflict and they couldn't, they abandoned, as he worded it, the estate because they represented the bank in the repayment of a loan from my husband. So, uh, they actually abandoned the estate and they could not be an estate attorney any longer. However, they continued to act as an estate attorney and they submitted legal invoices. After about three months, they, uh, they rendered a bill of 250000 which I objected to and as one um, executor, they went ahead and paid it because the head of the trust department at the bank, William Wilkie, said, well, you were outvoted, so we're going to pay it. So um, anyway, that uh, they paid them that, and then later on, they tried to bill, uh, I think after the final accounting, they tried to bill around 600000 more, uh, which wasn't paid, but I think at this point, it might have been paid. We don't really know. They didn't really consult me or speak to me about any of this. Uh, and of course, as I say, if they did put me through anything, it's always the court, the judge, the judge. Um, okay, now, as I said, they abandoned the estate when they filed the papers representing bankers trust company for repayment of the loan. Um, the, also, my other attorneys, such as Peter Raymond, Mark Oxman, Ray Dowd, they, they should have all known about these serious matters. I paid them huge legal bills, totaling over one million in total. Uh, bankers Trust told, uh, Company told us as executors it's customary to have the person who drafted the will to be the estate attorney. Of course, at that time, we didn't really know what was going on. We didn't know about the abandonment and so forth. Um, they failed to inform us and educate me about these material facts and other material facts that this was a conflict. And it was a close, they, they, were, they had a close relationship, uh, Bankers Trust did, uh, for, since 1903 with White and Case. And perhaps my husband did not know that either. Uh, and we did not find it out till 1999 after Deutsche Bank purchased Bankers Trust and it became a convicted federal felon, three fe uh, felony counts. So what happened to the other three executors? The answer, they were just grabbing what they could. So actually none of them really uh, legally did the correct thing as executors. 
Neither party revealed any of these material facts to us. Now, I'm stating all this for educational purposes so people will try to educate themselves so they will not be taken in by these con men. Someone once stated to me, you know, trillions of dollars have been lost through the transfer of money. Now I believe it. By the way, I'll quote Habakkuk 1 verse 4 in the Bible. The law has become paralyzed and there is no justice in the courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous so that justice has become perverted. You know, Glendora, we're all taught good manners and to keep silent and do not talk openly about these matters. It's personal business and most people do not want to hang out their dirty laundry. And then, of course, most people are afraid because of the, uh, the enemy will retaliate. So, and also I had people's advice to me. They would say, you better take what you can get or you will get nothing. Of course, my answer is one cannot work out of fear. We must be positive and not afraid. I believe justice will prevail in the end. We see in the political arena today, one cannot be afraid. The truth must come out and justice must be given. I know another victim and even myself who had been told in the court, there is no justice in this court. Another victim stated to me, Suzanne, and it was from a prominent family. Uh, many things were done to them also, and they said, you know, you are not alone and we are not crazy. That's another thing. At one time, one of the um, law lawyers of the court, and the referee, uh, I don't know exactly his title, but he's in the surrogate court, and he said, that little old lady, that crazy old lady, he was referring to me. Now, Judge Scarpino's law secretary asked me, oh, what do you want? And maybe it was the secretary who said that, the crazy old lady. She doesn't want to settle. Uh, Judge Scarpino's law secretary asked me, what do you want? My answer was justice. You see, they do not like that answer because they do not believe in justice. He said, there's no justice in this court. How much do you want? How much money? Do you want to talk to the bank? They are in the other room. I agreed to meet with them. He then came back to me and said, they do not want to meet with you. Now tell me who's in charge, the court or the convicted federal felon bankers trust company? Is the fox in charge of the hen house? Okay, now I get off my uh, philosophy here approach and get back to the facts. I believe at one of the first executors meetings when Rutherford stated I guess to everyone but he, he looked at me of course Suzanne you are the last to receive any money. Perhaps he should have explained to me. I really could not believe what I heard. I mean when I heard it it's like it hits you like what is this man saying? That sure was not my husband's desire. Rutherford drafted the will for my husband, Wynne Rutherford. He knew what my husband wanted. Uh, I surely do not object to paying debts, you know, in the estate, such as the repayment of my husband's $500,000 loan to be paid to Bankers Trust Company. I didn't object to any of that or any debts but I am the last to be paid. However, White and Case and Bankers Trust also, I must add, had liquidated the stocks and bonds amounting to at least seven million early on. So they surely could have covered the $500,000 loan repayment and also my $500,000 legacy that my husband said was due one month after death. My husband made that very clear. He also told me, be sure you get that one month after death. That's what you get. So they stalled the payment, and after 30 years now, I've received approximately half of the 500 in two separate payments. Now, they then even suggested I use some of my personal savings until they got things straightened out. 
incidentally, I have to add, my personal account was with a financial advisor who had a working relationship with Bankers Trust and White and Case. They all worked together. They knew how much money was in that account. The second statement from Wynne Rutherford of White and Case was, there is so much money in this estate that it will never run out. Now, why did he say a thing like that? Why? I guess to make me feel better, maybe. He said, you know, uh, you get interest from the, from the date of death that is not, uh, or on whatever you do not receive. You get it, get interest. Why did he say these kind of things? Just to make me feel better, I guess. Another wonderful re uh, surprise when Ruther had for me was since McCormick and Company was left to me, my husband's company, it may be a good idea, Suzanne, to sell it to Eddie Jr. for one dollar. Now, I know these things do occur, they happen, but uh, wait a minute. My husband obviously wanted me to have the company he didn't want his children to. So he obviously, when obviously knew I was grieving and lost with no good advice. Wynn tried to encourage me by stating that if Eddie made a profit, I could get a percentage and interest paid by the company. My husband left it to me since he didn't want, as I say, any of his children to run the consulting company, including Eddie Jr. I also believe Eddie did not want to deal with my husband's marginal cost system, which my husband had written a book about and was very successful. So Eddie really could not run it. Instead, Wynn could have helped me to either sell it or simply close it, which is what should have been done. Also, there was much information in the files in the office on the art collection, etc. There was furniture, you know, many, um, I guess there were computers or typewriters, so forth, and some paintings for me to go through, which I did, but there were files in there with a lot of information. After all, over the years, it was in the top 50 of consulting companies, even though it was going downhill due to his, my husband's illness. Actually, I have a very interesting story, if I can tell it a minute, as to the value or interest there was in the company before my husband's death. About a year before my husband died, he was alerted that a meeting was secretly going to be held in one of the rooms of his office after business hours. Some of, him employees, some of his employees were plotting to get the company. My husband came home and suggested we get our Irish setter, Coco, on her leash. Take her to the office, let her off the leash after closing the door for her to follow their scent. We did, and sure enough, she found them right away in one of the office rooms. They were quite alarmed, and I imagine quite afraid, since Coco was a big dog and could sense who we did not like or approve of. So I guess the company was of interest and quite viable, and it was in the top 50 out of thousands of companies. They were a member of Acme Consulting Companies also. I mean, they're uh, the Acme group. Um, <clears throat> then the next suggestion when Rutherford had for me was, you know, you really should think about selling your two homes, the one in Florida and the one that my husband and I really loved was the one in Dobbs Ferry, and my art collection on top of it. My husband, actually my husband suggested I would be able to live in my home in Dobbs Ferry until my death, which he was hoping. And I know he had tried to plan different times so I would be there through my whole life, the rest of my life. And uh, he even want, I investigated about a historical type of um, thing because it was, uh, the editor of House Beautiful had owned it and Frank Lloyd Wright, it was uh, like a Frank Lloyd Wright home, of course. Many, it was very special. When, uh, when Rutherford simply said, well, you'll need money. You know, you must, um, and, and, and I must I must add here then, down deep I wanted to trust these people that they knew best about investment and money matters, etc. 
plus when Rutherford drafted the will. So, uh, well, I'll think again, you know. Uh, perhaps he wondered what money I had. I, I don't know. I looked at different homes just to please them, but didn't allow them to sell my two homes. I wasn't interested. It was too early for me to make any decision like that. However, they did hook me with the art collection. They caught me early before I could really concentrate and do research on the paintings and get advice from friends and business advisors. I was basically standing alone. Later on, I found files in the office of McCormick and Company, which, of course, were left to me, which would have been of help. Finally, I had them transferred to my home in Dobbs Ferry. They, they leaned towards Sotheby's rather than Christie's to sell the collection. Sotheby's made it known to all the dealers about the sale, including the London dealers. D.D. Brooks was the former chief executive of Sotheby's and Alfred Taubman was the owner and chairman. D.D. Brooks had a private luncheon prior to the sale of my art collection. This was facilitated by White and Case and Bankers Trust Company, who we know now had no legal standing with my husband's estate. The con men were busy feathering their own nest. They had another meeting at which they told me prices had to be lowered. Now, of course, I believe you know, I believe I understood what was going on. What they Now I believe. Now I definitely know what was going on. There was also reception in London and um, for all the dealers to view the paintings, which I also attended. By the way, there's actually a book written about the art of the steel. S-T-E-A-L. My collection ended up being an estate fire sale. I was told later, of course, I should have stopped the sale from advisors and friends of my husband. Later, Sotheby's was charged with a federal violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act. Price fixing and rigging of art auction prices. Several of my paintings were lowered below their value, with Wynne Rutherford and White and & Case and the bank encouraging me to go ahead. I also believe my financial person went along with the idea. Time-wise, I believe about a year later, Christie's invited me to a reception where one of my paintings that sold for 200000 at Sotheby's was now up for auction at Christie's for 600000 and it sold for that. I was told by a few experts that there were quite a few other paintings in my collection in a similar situation, and I pretty much know which ones. The sale was done so quickly before I got to my husband's files in his office in regard to the paintings, correspondence, etc., which was all left to me. Now, Glendora, being upset about the sale of the paintings and the estate in general, my brother asked me to give a piano recital in a church near Atlanta, Georgia. Even though I was drawn away from the piano with all of this going on in the estate, I really wanted to prepare and get back to my music, so I accepted the date. My concert, when I performed there, it was well received, uh, and my brother informed me that a gentleman by the name of Wayne Smith, the head of Friendship Force, stopped in to hear me and was impressed. Uh, the former president, Jimmy Carter, was one of the leaders of the Friendship Force with Wayne Smith. Wayne Smith offered me, as a representative for the United States, a tour to Georgia, Russia for one month. Of course, I knew my husband would have been thrilled with the idea, so I decided I'd try to work hard and accept it. I took a friend along and many of my gowns since they were also going to make a film of me. I was a guest of the then President 
Shevardnesky. His granddaughter was my interpreter, and his daughter drove us around as needed where we had to go. I really did not feel musically or emotionally prepared. However, I knew my husband would not want me to pass up such an opportunity. Uh, since some of my concerts were canceled due to the fall of the Soviet Union, and they produced a documentary film which was shown at the Moscow Film Festival, and as I understand it, won a top reward, as I was told. Uh, they also filmed me in the diplomatic quarters, performing and wearing many of my beautiful gowns since fashion was one of my interests. I love to design and create with music and fashion. When I presented my plans to the bank in White and Case, when Rutherford, they suggested since I'd be gone for a month, I should give my executive powers to the bank while I was gone. With no attorney and no advice and still trusting, I agreed, thinking they would work in my best interest. At the executor's meeting before leaving for Russia, I was looking for Wynne Rutherford of White and Case to say my goodbyes, and finally found the attorney, Wynne Rutherford, and Eddie Jr. meeting in a room with the door closed. Now, I believe they were rubbing their hands together, plotting what they could do while I was gone. With big smiles, they wished me a great trip. Okay, now I think uh, this is near the end of this section, and uh, I will proceed further with the next episode, which will be episode number five. Um, and you want me to keep going? <laughs> you got 30 seconds. Uh, Okay, well, uh, I, I just, I can add that the next one will start with when I returned from my trip one month later, I was asked by Wayne Smith of Friendship Force if I would go on another tour, extensive tour, representing the United States throughout Europe, performing for world leaders and presidents of various countries. Um, Okay, now I think that will conclude this portion of uh, my episode, and I will proceed with the next episode when I can. Thank you.